Good morning. And welcome to Winterstown Church on this first Sunday after Christmas. We have just a few announcements this morning. A reminder that the Truth Seekers Sunday School class meets at 1030 in the conference room, and they're currently doing the series Monumental, Restoring America as the Land of Liberty. It's a DVD-based study, and descriptions of the topics for this week and next week are listed in your bulletin. Please feel free to join them as you are able. Also, the offering envelopes for next year have been placed on a table in the narthex. Don't forget to pick those up. And if you currently do not have envelopes but would like some, there's a clipboard you can write your name and pick up a box. Um, birthdays for this week include today and Doherty. Happy birthday. Um, Wednesday, Matt Gannon. Thursday, Tyler Jackson. Friday, Bonnie Myers. And Saturday, Naomi Latimer and Rebecca Barshinger. And there are no anniversaries for this week. Um, if you look at this week's activities, most things have been canceled for this holiday week. So take a look at that if you're involved. And other than that, please join in a time of fellowship. Please rise.
greet you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and welcome you to our worship service this morning. Good to have all of you with us today. We come now before our God and bring to God our joys and concerns. If you have a concern or joy, uh, raise your hand and they'll bring the microphone around to you. Pastor, mm -hmm. I'm right behind yep, you. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> I have a joy and a concern. Um, Coco and Virginia are in. They left yesterday from Arizona, and they are in New York right now visiting with her father, who is not very well. And Wednesday they will be coming to Lancaster because her best friend's mother passed away. So I think it would be great for us to remember that family in prayer. And then they would like to spend some time with anybody that would like to. So I think we are going to plan on New Year's Eve down here in the Fellowship Hall at 6.30. Anybody that would like to join us, just bring something. I'm sure people have things together. Come and let's just spend a, a time of fellowship. So please pray for them as they travel and, and their endeavors as why they are returning to this area for now. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Others? I well, just want to share. I help Aunt Pat, uh, Brooke and Tyler, and I help Aunt Pat run the Shining Light Ministry page. And over the couple of days we've had here of the holiday, we've gotten to see some of the pictures of people that we have helped, um, kids that have gotten gifts from Shining Light for Christmas that were wrapped under the trees. And it was really a joy to see those um, pictures come in and just see the people that we've helped throughout the year, um, especially around this time of year, and see their little happy faces on Christmas morning when they got some presents that they didn't think they might not be able to get. So that's my joy for the Christmas season. Okay, thank you. I uh, just want to uh, keep the uh, family of Ray Godfrey uh, in your prayers. He passed away this past week. And also, uh, I keep our families in the prayers. My aunt's mother-in-law down in Maryland also passed away the same day. Uh, so we have basically uh, two funerals here this next week. Thanks. Okay. Uh, and Ray's service will be here in our sanctuary on uh, Tuesday morning with the viewing beginning at 10 o'clock and service then beginning at 11 o'clock. <coughs> there are others today. Keep my grandmother Bonnie and Nelson in prayer. They're heading to Florida this morning and keep all the other snowbirds in prayer this morning. Okay, thank you, Tyler. I did receive word that uh, Kenton and Elaine and Jake and Reda made it safely down there uh, through a lot of traffic, but they got there Tuesday evening, I believe. So praise yeah. God for that. Let's take our joys and concerns before the Lord. Almighty and gracious God, you who are the creator of the heavens and the earth, you who are the one who has called us back into a loving relationship with you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we give you praise this morning. The psalmist has said that you are worthy of our praise, and indeed you are. We thank you, Father, for our celebrations this week, which remind us once again of the reality of your presence in our world through Jesus Christ and now through the Holy Spirit. We give you thanks that by your wisdom you have given us the opportunity to be your servants in this world. You have given us unique ministries. We especially give you praise today for our shining light ministry and for the lives that have been touched this Christmas season because of those who care. We thank you for the ways in which you allow us to tell the beautiful story of Christmas as we did in our live nativity this year. And we also give you thanks for the opportunity now on this last Sunday of the year to come before you to lift the scriptures that again remind us of the mystery of the incarnation 
and to sing the hymns which are so dear to our hearts. We also come before you today as your servants who care for those who are hurting or those who are in need. And indeed, we do pray for Keith Coco and his wife and family as they travel, give them safety and give them comfort as they share with their families. And Lord, we also pray today for Ray and for all of those who have lost their lives this week and would ask that, again, you would allow their families to see beyond the shadows of death, to be able to find their hope in the good news of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know that there are many who are traveling today, Lord, some who are traveling back home and some who are making their way to Florida, and we would ask that you would be with each and every one of them and keep them safe, that as they come together and as we worship together, that our joy indeed may be complete. And then, Lord, we know that there are men and women all around the world who are separated from their families this Christmas season. They go forth on a mission of peace, but yet they go in a land that is very, very troubled. Again, we hear the words of the angels that said, peace on earth, goodwill among men. And we wait for that peace to find its fulfillment. But we wait not with despair, but we wait with the hope that is ours in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who has promised, I will be with you even until the very end of the earth. It is in his name and with this promise that we come before you boldly this morning, lifting up our prayers and remembering how he taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. <clears throat> and now let us come before the Lord and bring on to him our tithes and offerings. <laughs> Down from heaven, 
Let's pray. Great are you, God, and greatly to be praised. You have blessed us in so many different ways, and now it is our joy to be able to bring before you these, our tithes and our offerings. We ask your blessing upon them, that as we end this year and as we begin a new year, that they may go out into all the world to share the good news of our, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and of his presence and power in our lives today, that as the scriptures have taught us, that all who believe may be, have the power to become the children of God. I ask your blessing upon those who give of themselves, Father, in so many different ways throughout this year and for the year to come. Bless them and the service that they give. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we ask these things. Amen. This morning we're going to share in an old tradition that began way back uh, first time around 1878 over in England when a church decided that instead of uh, the choir going to the individual residences to sing Christmas carols that they would have a Christmas service and in 1880 one of the archbishops of England added to that by adding scripture lessons which taught about the salvation history beginning from the book of Genesis all the way through the story of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over the years this tradition has continued it uh, was first really became uh, famous over in again in England at King's College where since uh, let's see I guess it was 1918 they began sharing this particular tradition on Christmas Eve and later, it became customary to sing these songs and these verses on the Sunday after Christmas. Over the years, I've discovered that there are many uh, different interpretations of this uh, service of scriptures and carols. Sometimes they focus on salvation history, but our focus this morning is going to be on the mystery of the Incarnation, how God came into the world in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I invite you to pay attention to your bulletin because we will be singing different uh, carols, but not all the verses of all of the carols uh, because of time constraint. So do pay attention to the verse numbers that you'll find printed in your bulletin. We begin our story of the incarnation, not in the New Testament, but way back in the Old Testament, where a prophet by the name of Micah gives the prediction of the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is there that the prophet says, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are little among the clans of Judah, from you shall come from me one who is to be the ruler in Israel, one whose origins are of old from ancient days. We sing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
from Luke's gospel, we hear these words. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel came from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin who was betrothed to a man named Joseph, who was of the house of David. Now the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But when Mary heard these sayings, she was troubled, and she considered in her mind what sort of a greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and you will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High God will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called the Son of God. Say, so what child is this? <laughs> In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, 
to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and of the lineage of David. He went to be enrolled with Mary, who was his betrothed. She was with child, and while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and she laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Silent night. In that region there were shepherds who were out in their field keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. And they were filled with fear, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all of the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ, the King, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And then suddenly, there is with that angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Now when the angel went away from them into the heavens, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, that the Lord has made known to us. And so they went quickly, and they found Mary and Joseph. The baby was lying in a manger. And when they saw the child, they made known the sayings which had been told them by the angel. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds were saying. But Mary, she kept all of these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned to their fields, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and all that they had seen as it had been told to them. Angels we have heard on high.
And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus. The name that had been given by the angel before he was even conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of the Lord, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord and to offer the sacrifices, again, according to what is written in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was in Jerusalem a man whose name was Simeon. He, this man was righteous and very devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him that the, by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw the Lord's Christ. Inspired by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when he saw the parents bringing the child, he rejoiced, and he lifted him up in his arms, and he said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the peoples, a light for, <clears throat> for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for the people of Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at the things that had been said about him. But then Simeon said to his mother, Behold, this child is sent for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against and a sword will pierce your soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Emmanuel. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is he who has been born the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we come to worship him. Now, when Herod the king heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. Assembling all of the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the child was to be born.
they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art by no means least among the nations of Israel. For from thee shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men, and he ascertained from them at what time they first saw the star. Then he sent them on their way, saying, Go to Jerusalem and search, or go to, excuse me, go to Bethlehem and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, return to me, that I too may go and worship him. And so the wise men went their way. And the star which they had seen in the east went before them. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. The star came to rest over the house where the child was. And they went into the house. And when they saw the child and Mary, they fell on their knees and they worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered to him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod. So they departed to their own countries by a different way. Gospel of John, we hear these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become 
the children of God who were born not of blood, not of, the will, uh, not of flesh or of the will of man, but of God. We'll <clears throat> join in singing our last hymn, and then I believe our pra praise team has a song to sing to us to conclude our service this morning. Let's join in singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. rise for the closing song.
It is with joy in our hearts now that we go into the world to share that light that will never be overcome by the darkness again. We go as children of God. We go in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.